So we're here at CES 2011. Uh, so are there big announcements? Big announcements. Uh, we've got about five different products going into production this quarter. We're showing our first uh, public viewing of our 7-inch product that's scheduled for production this spring. And uh, we're making some new pro other new products, a 9.7 and a 10-inch HD that we're talking about a little bit too. 9.7 and 10-inch? Yeah, 10-inch, 1280 by 800. All right, so you're doing a 4 by 3 also? Or? A 4 by 3, 9.7 with um, super high contrast and like 170 degree plus viewing angle plus, you know, saturated color, like an iPad screen plus sunlight readable plus super low power. Nice. And the uh, first time you show an ARM powered laptop? Yeah, this is an ARM powered, it's super low. I haven't, we just got this, so we haven't measured the power. It's very light and it's ARM with our screen. This is a backlight off, so this is a, a very rough numbers about one watt and light and uh, sunlight readable, of course. We don't have the back, I can turn the backlight full on. Wide view. Yeah, and this is this view, is the yeah. full quality that's going to be in the in a mass production model. Are you still doing yeah, some tweaks? Yeah, yeah. I think there might be some tweaks to the software and perhaps to the bezel. Okay, but let's go over to the to the over sure. here. So, what can you say about these? Uh... Oh, these are these are um, the the developer boards. Yeah? Maybe Carlin Vieri, our VP of engineering, would be better to speak to that. <laughs> okay. Well, so, he knows more. He he actually yeah? led the, the development of that. Stuff. So, Pixel so basically, so these you, are two developer boards. Do you want to talk so about So, if you combine ARM and, and Pixel Cheese, basically, is the optimal solution. We think so. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah uh, we don't care, but yeah, you can combine ARM and Pixel Chi or uh, any other processor in Pixel Chi, and you get a very low power, uh, uh, optimized system. So, what kind of uh, things do you need to develop here to use ARM with the Pixel Chi? So for the most part, it's it's plug and play. It's very much like a conventional display. Uh, the same interface, uh, the same uh, drivers, um, but there's an opportunity for optimization in terms of customizing the software for backlight control, for uh, power reduction, uh, and even even for image rendering. All right. So, how early is this? These are uh, just reference designs. These are pretty early prototypes uh, that that show. Our panel working with a variety of SOCs. Do the the actual uh, SOCs control the amount of backlight somehow, like at, uh, dynamically, or? There's no ambient light sensor on these uh, reference designs. Uh, there is a backlight control, so we can just push the button and turn the backlight off completely on this one. Nice. And uh, so, what's up with the seven inch? But this is the new. That's a first seven inch sample there. So this is um, seven inch. It's wide view. Um, and you can turn off the backlight. And so that's uh, Kitty Matt's production this this spring. In um, you know, it's a nice, compelling form factor. It's you know, light. This is uh, a little bit thick. The first backlight. This is I think 3.8, 3.9, and we're coming out with a a little bit bigger than two and a half millimeter one as well. So this is uh, this is nearly seven inch. Yeah, so people are used to carrying something like, I've got a Gen 1, but something this like this around. So there's a lot of demand for 7 inch. 7 inch is pretty hot, but 10 inch is, is, is good too. And we're looking at some smaller size, 4 or yeah. 5 inch for if you remove the big keyboard mobile phones. And add this. You remove the touch screen, well, it's the same. The, yeah. Right you. Oh, yeah. There you go. So these are, uh, uh, what do you call these? Con uh, demos, concept demos? Mm -hmm. or? <coughs> You added your screen in there. How hard was it to add it in this one? This Very design. easy. Very easy. This one, uh, we removed the touch panel, uh, so that's why we have an external mouse. Uh, but this is uh, very simple to do. All right. And these two? These are also just uh, concepts. All right. So what can the uh, people I mean, people are waiting for Pixel G. How long do they have to wait? We're shipping the screens out. I mean, I think we had the team working in, in China last week to ship out a whole bunch of screens to Notion Inc., uh, for example, and more and more. So we've uh, massively increased our manufacturing capacity. We announced we have now also the second, our first fab, and now also the second largest manufacturer of me medium-sized screens in the world, uh, making three different screens. The seven inches, the first of that. There's two other screens that they're making. 
So are there some uh, ch challenges still to to fit it inside their manufacturing process or no? Or is more we like can a actually business, make uh, um, the squeezes the screens in any size in in basically any LCD fab in the world. Basically, there might right. be some extreme exceptions, but basically we can do this anywhere. The issue has been the first fablet because being the first fabless LCD designer in the world, we needed to get access to the fabs. We were doing this amidst the economic crisis when these fabs were losing a billion dollars a quarter and put in austerity measures to slow down development. And we got, we got hit by that. By the time we emerged from that, Apple was coming out with a new product you've probably heard of, the iPad. Yeah. And a lot of uh, the products that we've been working on got shifted a little bit. And it takes a while for hardware to shift. It's not like with software, once you finish the software, you know, you hit send and, and you can ship it out in, in volume. Hardware, we come first. We need to finish the screen and then the device development starts. And that can take six months to nine months. So now what's happening is iPad was released in April. We've got a whole bunch of products coming online now. So it's a little bit the fault of iPad. Well, don't really. some, it's some, a some, fantastic some, yeah. product. But yeah, um, but it'd be nice if uh, the iPad 2, uh, if you could manage to like uh, provide it there. Well, but, uh, we you can't know? talk if you're yeah. working with Apple. You can't talk about it. But yeah. no, I, the, the iPad was pretty cool. But the, the tablet was disruptive this because, last year, 2010. Yeah. I think by any measure, right? Because so. you need you need some big uh, manufacturing, right? You need a big brand to back it up, and eventually, yeah. that's the way to do it, right? Yeah. You need to have some mass so, manufacturing. And that's how we've been able to get like the seven-inch turned on. We have a big customer for seven-inch, and that allowed us to get a new fab. Um, uh, started up and uh, going on the seven inch and others through by demonstrating real demand from tier one customers in real high volumes for these types of screens that we were, that we're doing. Um, they know, make offer 14 million yeah, screens per month. That company, right? CPT, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I'll trust you on that. I'm, I mean, in, so, in the press release, he was saying something like that, and so there's capacity, but it just depends. Yeah. So depends there's capacity. In, uh, and uh, you know, here's here's another really cool thing. Here's this screen is is has no battery in it. It's all the power and all of the data is coming over USB. You turn off the backlight. You can see it's like a split screen from there. Turn on on that backlight. But you can just drive this, so it's an extra screen, or it's you know just USB powered. Not you don't need all the cables. Also, it works with wireless USB. It's optional. A company called Display Solutions is doing that. And uh, do you yeah. actually read the uh, books yourself on your screen? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. You have read some like some many books or uh, yes. When you read, you do it on your screen. I do. All right. So it's I mean that's basically what you call dog food, what you call concept. So totally, it's it's totally readable, of course. It's totally readable. I mean, I get email from people about our screen. You know, they, they buy it at Make, for example, and retrofit their, their netbook. And one of them said, my vision has improved so much. And I thought, really? What do you mean by that? And he wrote a long note back to me saying, you know, he used to take eye drops once an hour, all day long, even had to wake up to take eye drops in the middle of the night. And now, with the Pixel G screen, his eye drop usage has gone down 90%. And I thought, Wow, that's great. It's anecdotal. It's a one person that needed eye drops. But there's an issue in, in the brightness of the screen and matching the, you know, staring into a flashlight versus seeing something that more matches the ambient light that appears to, you know, for that person and other people have um, a great impact on, on, on readability. All right. Reading is a big thing for, for humans. Yes. So it's, Actually, uh, the world's information is digital, right? And the way we get to it is through screens. And, and as it's increasingly you know, difficult, we see you know, people have a vision of the future of displays on every surface. And before we get there, we need displays on more surfaces or more devices because that's how we get access to the information. If you look at a tablet, you know, what you see is the screen and nothing else. You know? and Basically, we're taking the view that, you know, this is basically a big silicon chip. It's amorphous silicon. It's, but what can we do using existing manufacturing processes to create displays that are both input and, you know, output? Like, how do we, you know, do, add more circuitry underneath? Most, our screen is mostly reflective. 
So we have a lot of room to put circuitry underneath those metal layers. And we are. We're creating new functionalities that can, you know, thinner touch sensors, but also why not eye tracking and why not, you know, some you know, solar uh, uh, pickups of uh, sort of, uh, you know, like a solar cell builds yeah. into that. They can just, you know, like a calculator you buy at the drugstore work. In the limit, can't we make screens that don't need battery power, that are available just with room light to turn on. And we can get there, I think, with what we're doing with screens. If you look at even an atom, the atom chip, this is an atom, there's an atom chip in here, the atom chip takes about a third of a watt. It's a GPU that takes about, in very rough numbers, three watts. Okay. And all that to update a screen at 60 hertz, where not a single pixel in that screen needs to be updated at 60 hertz, it's just a convention. So why don't you update that at one hertz or no hertz? How do you do that? We have access to that real estate underneath the pixel to basically add more functionality to, to the screen to allow that, to get rid of the three watts there and get rid of the huge power consumption there. That's in our roadmap. That's coming down the, the pike. Meanwhile, we're shipping you know, screens and improving our metal you know, this year as we go along and continuing to develop and improve the technology. Uh, so, so if it's mass produced, it can be the same price as LCD. In the limit, at that volume, yes. I mean, it's a game of volume and how much of the fab capacity you use. So, right now, for example, we have to flush out the line and put in our recipes and adjustments to the equipment for a day. Then we run our our capacity for a day, and then the next product goes in. If we have to pay for three days of capacity for one day of use, so as we scale that, uh, the yeah. price. Plummets. How about the yield and reliability of the screens? You need mass mass manufacturing for it to be optimal, uh, so you can prove that it actually right. has a super yield and uh, right. and it can last. How is there any difference in between how long it will last compared to another LCD, or is there something you can measure in that? Or well, we've got six years under our belt through OLPC, and we've shipped more than two million units in some of the most extreme environments in the world: Mongolia, Tibet, you know, the Peruvian jungle, the Peruvian Andes, highlands, you know, all over, Rwanda, Afghanistan. And there we're seeing, you know, extremely great reliability with children using these screens. The number one cause of failure is the glass breaks, you know, that's not a reliability issue. Um, and the yields are quite high. We've been running um, over those two millions extremely high yield, equivalent to regular LCD yield in the 90s of percentages. All right. So. so. It's a proof. It works. Yeah, it works. Right. And we're just continually improving that as quickly as possible and scaling our mass production ability. All right. Looking forward. Okay, yeah. thanks.